and I'm just making a little template to cut this out. Two bits of wood, they'll go down either side. I'm just doing it on here because it's flatter. And I've cut this to the same thickness as that, as that distance. I'll cut it in half and spread it out to create the hole that I want. This could have been a bit longer, but I don't think it'll matter. Oops. So I glue that together the size that I want in there. And I want the cell hole to be about, I don't know, that big. Fifty mil. Okay. Uh, that lines up with that line, so that's that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And I made this very slightly smaller than than the thickness of this because this is going to get covered with beads and glass. I can bang a screw in this to hold it in place. Uh, I just tried it on a piece of scrap. Extractor got most of the dust out. Near enough. Always gets a little square. I'll do. Just have to clean up the holes, square up the hole when I get to it. I'm going to do it on these now. Getting used to the switch and the lock's going to take a bit of getting used to. I've used this for 25 years at least. It's very slightly different.
just a score mark that just a burn mark that crushed it it's a nice fit don't want it tight Right, so those four holes are cut as mortises. This machine has the lock and the trigger. But 25 years or more of using this one, this is the trigger and this is the lock. So while I was using this, I turned it off a couple of times, <laughs> thinking I was locking it. It's the other way around. And I forgot that the depth setting on this for channeling that's as high as it do goes it'll go lower than that but it won't go any higher and I want it up there I want to cut this sort of thing I want to cut a tenon that'll go in there even if I moved all this junk and got my sled out I wouldn't get these long legs on there so, but it's dark, so I'll do that tomorrow. I'll have to think about it tonight. cut this shoulder with the saw because I'll get a nice square clean cut and I know where it's cut in there if I, if I go to the front line it won't be cutting too deep at the back see my line there so what I'll do set that up I'm going to put a stop at this end and screw a bit of timber on so all I should have to do is cut down to my line flip it over do the other side spin it around and do exactly the same on the other end So all I've got to do is finish off those by hand. I went to this line and I think the blade cuts up but it might be very slightly undercut in there. It don't matter. See how the grain goes up, so now I can be quite confident and cut into there without it breaking off this way.
this side because I flipped it over that grain was going that way so there's a chance that this will go that way so I won't just hit it there because I might split that not split it but see it goes down a fraction up again swings around about isn't it go for it That's pretty good. It's a lot better than I could have done by hand. Hope the rest go together like that. So that's where my legs gonna sit. 
So that's where my leg's going to sit. Now I want to cut a chamfer on this front edge. I've set it back just a fraction. I don't want to be behind here, I prefer it to be slightly in front. And then I'll put a little drip mould in the bottom. And I want that to be parallel with this, with this board. Move this back a little bit. This board, I've got a fence that's fixed to this. So what I want is that, that line to be parallel with that. So if I lift that up, about 75. So I need a piece that's about 45, because I'll need to fix it to this, so it'll need to sit inside, so. Oh. Uh, I've got a piece of off-cut up scant there. It's only 40 mil, but that's there's 70. So that there is 70. So that's where my chamfer's gonna cut. Something like that, that'll do. I don't have this too far in because as it cuts, this piece of wood will, will bend over. So if I mark that there, fix this to that. So I'll get this mounted in the plane now. So I'm going to rub a bit of wax on this, just to help it slide. Right, a couple of clamps just holding this on, here and there. I could cut some of this off first, I could even cut it completely and then just plane it by hand but I like this because it gives a very consistent, nice clean cut. Right, that's it, I'm up to my line there, I'll just put it back in just to say this board should have been further this way, and the first couple of cuts that we're just doing on this edge slowly got wider and wider and settled down, but this first cut I wanted to push the board like that so I just had to push down on that far edge, it didn't take much, but that's done now. a tiny little bit of snipe at this end you can sort of see the distance off there nice straight line across very similar distance there within a millimetre or so if not spot on right cleaned up that hole need to do that one and then put my little drip mould on I'll just run right along that. Right, I should have put a haunch on these really. Like that. Cut that off. I made a little haunch on there, but I've been lazy. It's easy to route out a big hole like that. Uh, I've got confidence that it's going to come together okay. Get some glue in and some screws. And I can lift it back up on the table to do the beading. Uh, it's cold, so glue sat in a pot of hot water. I'll get some on here, get some screws in.
Uh, I've got it set up on my bench, on my trestles, and I'm using a long pointy stick. Put that in there, if I can, with one hand. And that's just very slightly off that pencil mark I made the other way. Like that. So that pencil mark's on there, I can't reach. But I'll take this with me to sight. So now I know it's so much like square. Get some beading around. <laughs> 